you know someone that's struggling in this market or just feels like it could be another 2006, 7, 8 again, you are going to love this interview, especially when you hear how this couple went from zero to 500 transactions. Let me say it to you again, zero to 500 transactions, and they're just getting started. So give them context. How many transactions will you do this year and what's the team look like so people have context before we go to the early days? Sure. Total team, we've got 36 people on the team. Okay. We'll close uh, right over 500 units at $210 million. Congratulations. Thanks. Right? That's a big business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, a lot of and, fun. And for the person listening, we're going to unpack how they got there because this was done really just in the last like two and a half years. Right before COVID. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's remarkable. So take yeah. us back to 2006. I'm going to go into real estate. I want to be near family. I've got my son, right? He must have been at that time, what? Three. Two, yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. right? So, so you know, that's perfect time to go into real estate. That's right. 2007 hits, global mortgage meltdown. It was all your fault, Nate, it by the was. way. <laughs> yes. What did you do your first year? Seven deals. That's actually really good. Yeah. yeah. Were they... REO, were they short sale? Were they the la first time buyers? Yeah, I strictly, um, when I got into real estate, all I did was open houses literally every single day yeah. from 12 until five o'clock. Would you recommend that to people today? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Um, you can build your database. You build relationships with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great way to collect information from yes. people. Yes. Nate, Can, you were going to say? Yeah. You know, like that's, that is how Jamie started was open houses. Everybody in our brokerage thought mm -hmm. she was crazy yeah. because she was like, I have to make money. So she was going and holding open houses during the day. Yep. She, we still have the sign on one of our doors. She had a little, you know, like I'll be back at with a, a time thing on it. And she would put that on the, go have lunch or, you know, go do something real quick and come back to the open house. So she was holding open open houses in the middle of the week. Yeah. And what you found out was that the people that were coming to those open houses weren't kicking as many tires right. as the people were coming right. in on weekends and you yes. built and you were able to capitalize on that. So yeah. it, it was pretty awesome. Even I as her husband and I wasn't in with her like in the business at that time was like, you're just going to go sit at a house all day. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And she'd yeah. come home and she'd have She'd have a contact. Yeah. You know? and yeah. It only takes one. That's right. right. Yep, that's and, exactly Andy C. It. and Stephanie, you know, younger, who are like great, you know, friends of ours. They mm -hmm. also, I mean, they do 400 and 600 open houses a year. And they're right. like, yep. you only need one great one. If you get one great one every day and you do it 200 times, right. you're going to win. You're yeah. going to win. Yeah. So, so looking back, right. What did you do in 2007? That, like that, that was the year you did seven transactions. Yeah. Yep. What did you do in eight? Because um, eight got really mucky. Well, it's, it's kind of funny because I don't think I'm a dumb person, <laughs> Let me preface that. I concur. <laughs> but, you know, I, I didn't pay attention brilliant. to the world. I wasn't yeah. listening to everything. Interesting. And so for me, I just, my whole philosophy has always been keep my head down and the money will come. And yeah. so during those years, when I look back, I just realized I never really looked at the news or listened to anybody. Yeah. And a lot of the senior agents that were in the office were all complaining and talking negatively, but I just kept focus and head down. And for me, every year I seemed to double what I was doing the year before. Mm -hmm. um, but part of it now, knowing what I know now is I didn't let that affect my mindset. Yes. And I think that was a huge thing back then that contributed to our success. Oh, absolutely. Do you think though there was something about, you know, moving back home, starting over, I'm, you know, I'm assuming you weren't like, well, since we are sitting on several million dollars in savings, right. let's move back to Texas and right. start over, right? Yeah. You, you got a young son. You guys, we were, were young. You know, yeah, you're coming out of the mortgage business, which yeah. was an absolute disaster at that time. That's right. Was your back against the wall? Did you have to do it, or was it cushy for you? No, we we had to, and it's a really funny story that I share um, that's probably pertinent today. Oh. But we were really broke. I thought it was going to be an easy job, like probably a lot of people do. Sure. He had the mortgage industry crash, basically. And um, I'll never forget, I was walking into the office and the phone rings. You know, the biggest thing in real estate is to answer your phone. Yes. Right? And so I answered the phone and the lady said, hey, you, you came by one of our model homes. You're the grand prize winner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And um, I said, what I win? She said, $6,000 in gas. And I was like, what? And she said, yes, $6,000. So what we won were $6,000 in gas cards. That's awesome. Which for us, when we were super broke at the time, was like, I don't know, just the cherry on top. That's like a massive game changer. It was, it was oh, huge Especially for, for a real estate agent. Yeah. That was huge. It was insane. Um, but the, the lesson of the whole story yeah. was, as she said, I'm really glad you entered your phone. 
And I said, why? And she goes, you're the fourth person that I called. Oh, it's like Google local services ads. Right. Exactly <laughs> you're right. You're the fourth person. Yes. Well, why did you choose us? Because you answered Cause the you damn answered phone. The phone. <laughs> exactly. We'd like to buy a house and no one's yeah. responding. Yes, right? exactly. That's the same thing. That, you know, I can't wait to introduce you guys to my friend, Michael Polzler, who has like 35,000 agents in Europe. And he's like, answer the phone. Answer the phone. Because in Europe, it's just it's just not as easy, right, mm -hmm. as it is in the U.S. I mean, people still don't answer the phone in the U.S. It'd be mm -hmm. nice if they did. But in Europe, they really don't answer the phone. If you're from Europe, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you go from seven to what? 14-ish? 14, 15, yeah. Okay. And then, and you, so in the beginning it was open houses. Did you do anything differently from a marketing and lead generation standpoint that reflecting back, maybe someone listening right now be like, okay, what should you do in year two to double? Yeah. So in year two to double, I had all that, my database from all the open house people. And that's all I did was work my database. Interesting. Co constantly calling, constantly emailing. Mm -hmm. I did also kind of lighten up a little bit on open houses, Yeah. but I still did them consistently yeah. every weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was in the time where, you know, like you were literally on your phone making phone calls. You weren't texting like we didn't yeah. text back yes. then, right. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I didn't think the texting thing was really going to take off yeah. at the time. And um, <laughs> but you were like constantly making calls like in and, and you would go into the office at like into our home office at night and and make calls and and you constantly picked up the phone yeah that was your and life sometimes we talk about real estate sometimes we wouldn't sure but just keep those connections going I, you know we talk about it all the time you know david caldwell and i were just texting it's like the whole game is whoever has the most conversations that's no, right it's so true though right so so what i hear is in year two you know you had some transactions under your belt Right. You realize there might be a, a better use of your time, making more phone calls, showing more houses, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Did you add any other lead generation in year two? Open houses being the first and then yeah. what else? I, I think one of the, the big game changes for Jamie and and it shows like where she is now, it that was like the the seed to it was was Relo in, oh. in your approach oh. to Relo. So I think that's worth sharing that story. Um very short story, um, but I was sitting in the office. I'll never forget all mm -hmm. these, you know, seasoned agents walk over and they're like, "Jamie, we're all about to leave. They're about to raise the referral fee for mm -hmm. relocation." Yeah. So they're going from twenty five percent, I think, to thirty two point five. Yeah. And I kind of look at the lady, and uh, she's like, "Come with us. We're going to another brokerage." And I and said, you weren't on Relo. I wasn't on Relo yet, but I looked at her, and I probably should have kept this to myself, but I said it out loud, and I said. Actually, what I'm going to go do is ask the manager for all your Relo business. And they all left, and I became the Relo person for the office. In and chaos, there is opportunity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was a really, that was an astute move on your part. Yeah. And even, you know, back then, like paying 32% or, you know, like 25% has been the standard in the industry forever. Right. Relo is now like 42%. 40, yeah, 48 right? actually yeah. now. 48. Yeah, 48. 48. Yeah. So, so how many transactions came from Relo? At that moment, probably about 75% of them. Wow. But it, I had a different perspective on them because, you, yes, you are doing a relo fee. Yes, mm -hmm. you're doing yes. all those reports. Well, it's like Zillow Flex or RBC right. or Op City yeah. or, or an agent agent referral. Like it is what it is. Yeah. yeah but my goal was a sign in the yard, yep. which created more opportunities Thank for you. buyers and people calling me. So my name and branding kind of got out from that point. Yes. And that was that was kind of my whole outlook on it. Still to this day, I do relo. Mm -hmm. I I embrace it because I just know for me, my goal right. is not that transaction. It's all the transactions I'm getting transactions from it. How many transactions you yeah. built yeah. off of it. Yeah. And, and, and you would even back then, you would, you know, people would wave your flag and talk about how awesome you were you were as an agent and you would be like, that's great. Do you know anybody that needs my service? Like you literally right. were saying that before, yeah. right. before coaching, like, yeah. it was yes. like it was who, great. who do you know that needs me? Yeah. And so the referral business from the Relo, like it was, it, it was just, and it, it just showed how open-minded you were to it. When a lot of agents are like, I'm not giving up my split, you right. know, and it's like. Right. right. And back then, I bet you weren't on like the more traditional splits that we see today across mm -hmm. the U.S. Correct. and exactly. Canada, the, you know, 85, yeah. 88, 90, right. right? Back then, I'm guessing you were on like 60, 55, 55 and then they're 60, taking, yeah. right? Then yeah. they're taking yeah. 32.5 yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. but. It wasn't about that deal. Janelle Garrison was on the podcast uh, about a month and a half ago, said the same thing in the early days of her career. I don't know if it actually made the show, but she said, I took Relo because. I would take this client out. I'd go sell them a house. They were relocating in. They work for, you know, name the company. 
but I knew they were gonna leave in two years. Right. So exactly. I was gonna get the listing on the other side. Yeah. yeah. And I was gonna get any one of their other friends that they knew. I'd introduce them to people inside the community. I'd get them like really connected. And she's like, that's just a good thing to do in general. It's the same reason why she says I take first time buyers out today. Yeah. Like after, you know, 20 plus years, so I still take them out because I want to remind myself of how awesome it is to hand somebody their keys. That's, that's right. Great. Whether it's a reload or whatever, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So at what point in your career, we kind of went 07, 08. At what point did you go, shit, I got this? <laughs> um. Well, <laughs> last week? No, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't heard her say that. Yeah, yet, Tom. yeah but not quite that. Um, yes. I remember a couple of years later, I finally became number one in our office. Yeah. And it, that was one of my goals, was to be yeah. number one. And we beat out, or I beat out this lady that had been number one forever. Yes. And at the award ceremony, she said, You did a really great job, but you'll never do it again. Oh. And God love her. I yeah, just told yeah. the story the other day because, <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if she was serious yeah. or if she was being nice, right? Mm -hmm. But I kind of think now she was being serious. Yes. But that was my catapult. So after that year, I tripled basically what I was doing. Yeah. And you're like, uh, I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. I'll buy five more houses. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever exactly. it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah. You, do you, do you, you came home pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember at the summit when we talked about, like, I was like, okay, I synthesize. What do all these extraordinary people have in common? And the number one thing was uber competitive. Yeah. yeah. Right? How important is that to you? Like to whether it's to be number one or to just be your best. And then what what advice would you give to someone that maybe just isn't as competitive? Maybe they've lost a couple of times and they took it personally. What advice do you have for those people? For me, I don't know if it's competitive, it's the no ceiling. Yeah. Right. And like I thrive and I feel like we build our business on no ceiling. Yeah. So when agents, what does that mean? I, yeah, I, when I agents hallucinate. Yeah. yeah. When agents come to me and say, hey, I'm not quite feeling this. Can I do this? It's like, yes, let me help yeah. you succeed with yeah. whatever you want to do. There is zero ceiling. Yes. And I, and I was in an industry beforehand that I just felt like I couldn't grow. Yeah. And I think that's like just not not a good thing for me. So yeah. I think it, that's part of my competitiveness mm -hmm. is that I want to be better every day. Where did that come from, though? Um. I don't know where that came from. I, I really don't. Were your, were your parents competitive? Did you play competitive sports? Did you win the spelling bee when you were four? Like, I feel like we're about to do an, uh, an Oprah podcast. So <laughs> go ahead. No, I just get I, out the tissue box. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't come from a really great background. Yeah. So I think that was maybe part of it that yeah. I was just. You, you I, had I, to scratch and claw for everything. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember looking at people in my life saying, I don't want to be like you. Yeah. That's the one thing I know. Yeah. So maybe that's what kind of flipped me over for to. For sure being who yeah. I am today. Yeah. I don't, I don't go ahead, Nate. No, I was going to say, you've always been tunnel visioned in, in the goal, right? Like that's always in, in like she was saying earlier, like she, she di didn't used to watch the, the news, mm -hmm. you know, and it was keep, keep your head down and just move straight. We didn't really celebrate a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, and because it was, there was a goal here when we were getting close to that, she had already moved the goal further, you right. know, and, and it's that competitiveness. And, and I think it's just staying tunnel visioned and, and moving forward and, and, and coming from like the best thing for Jamie. And I think like you're saying to your, your, uh, your sphere now is this market, this market yep. is going to create some incredible agents. Right. And that market created Jamie as an incredible agent. There's right. no doubt about it. Right. Cause if you have to succeed, then you've got to learn how to succeed in a, in a challenging market. Yeah. But I think I agree a thousand percent. Yeah. I think what's important for the listener right now is, you know, sometimes when you see someone like you two and you're like, oh, they're just so successful. Well, of course they are because, you know, they moved from Chicago, they had great jobs, they came here, they started over, she's social. But most of the best people we know have these crazy backgrounds mm -hmm. yeah. that that brought them to this point where they finally found something that like they can sink their teeth into yep. and maximize their potential. And all that sounds like cliche and motivational, but it's true. Yeah. It's like, okay, I barely got out of high school, but I can study people and then I can become a business coach, right? Like I had a horrible, you know, situation and then I realized with this I can be unlimited. I could do whatever and then I can help everybody else around me. And how that makes you feel mm -hmm. gives you the juice every single day. Right. So Back to the question. When did you think you actually got it? <laughs> I don't I don't have an answer for that. I don't know that that we've actually yeah, I don't, got it or made yeah, it. I, like for me at least. Yeah. I don't know that we're Yeah. Jamie hasn't high fived yet. Yeah. You know, like and it, which is frustrating as a husband. Yes. And as a partner, it's like, uh, here we go. Right. You know, like yeah. it's yes. it, 
we're close to getting to this goal. So here she goes. The whiteboard's right. erased. Know it's yeah, the <laughs> whiteboard's <laughs> erased and we're the moving on. The 23 whiteboards are already out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Got the photo. Yeah. We're going to show you the photo later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so we got some context for the early days. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about um, at what point did the two of you say to each other, okay, we only got 24 hours a day. We only got seven days a week. We're together on this. We need to build this thing called team. I have that answer. Tell me. It's not a proud moment. Um, it was the year of 2013. Yeah, 2013. I was on my way to the hospital about to have our second baby. And I was dealing with an offer deal that was about to bust through. Mm-hmm. Told the agent, hey. Baby bust through and deal bust through. Yes. 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 I told the agent. I said, hey, let me. I have an appointment. Let me call you back in a minute. Literally on, on the, the way phone. to the I hospital. I can remember this moment. I hang, hang <laughs> I up the phone. I have an appointment. <laughs> hang up the phone. Have the baby. Uh, before we even go to the waiting room, you know, where you get your room and settle yeah. in, I'm calling the agent back to finish the deal. And as I'm sitting there with the baby, just realizing, and I had done, I think that year I did 130 deals with just me and Nate. Yeah. Uh, no assistant, no anything. So we we were working a lot. I was like, this cannot be right. Yeah. Like, this is not How right. How did you have time to get a baby in there? Well, <laughs> is it a I just, time that, again, Sorry, did I just... Man, <laughs> yeah, you keep jumping around, dude. <laughs> like, but uh, I just so, remember but, that was but, not a good moment. But why was it not a good moment? Um, because there's just more to life than work. And we were, mm-hmm. I was grinding and my brain was so full of clients and here, this is little baby. How right. am I going to bring him right. and make him as great as our other son? And they were 10 years apart. We were starting all over again with right. the baby. So it was just an important moment that I was like, I've just, we've got to make a decision on this. So what so did you say to yourself? I said, we need help. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. We yeah. need help. Yeah. So we did We did get a nanny to help us. Um, we were working pretty much from home at that point. But then I also had a neighbor who was a client. And I said, hey, can you go get your real estate license? I need help. And she did. So in the beginning, did you have a guide? Did you have, like, did you go online? Did you read a book? No. Or, it was, no, just, I, it was really, just, I need help. I need help. I really, looking back now, I really wish that we would have – had you and or, yeah. or a coach, anybody, 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 anybody at that book, point right? to help like, us. Yeah. 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 So Nate, what was it like bringing on your first teammate and, and what role did neighbor take on? So tell me it wasn't another salesperson because you didn't need any more sales. No, it, she literally, it, she, she's, her, our families are very close. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was four, four houses down. She cut hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was a great stay at home mom. She mm-hmm. cut hair from her house. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she was kind of at a crossroads, you know, she would confide in Jamie about being at crossroads. So that's, you know, it all kind of was a perfect storm for her and Mm -hmm. for us. And so Jamie's like, go get real estate license. Um, I I can, I can throw some deals at you really quick. Mm -hmm. But handling transactions or handling clients? Clients. Clients going out. So you went with a salesperson. You didn't need any more deals. Well, no, I. I, You just needed to hand off. Yes. One of my biggest problems, though, is I don't say no. Yeah. Uh, It's a good and bad thing, right? It's helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. But same thing with clients. If you called Mm -hmm. and said, I need to buy Mm -hmm. or sell a house, okay, no problem. You were number 30 for the month. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I needed help with that. And so uh, there was zero training. We laugh about it now. She's still with us. Um, She's our top producer, but it's like zero training, just jumped in, and we still laugh about it today. Oh, yeah. Isn't it amazing how former hairdressers, nurses, teachers, bartenders, waitresses, waiters become unbelievable real estate agents? That's right. Absolutely. It's yeah. like you can multitask. If you can handle 30 kids in a classroom, you can handle two escrows. Because they can talk, yeah. right? Yeah. And they can commu- – well, yeah. bartenders. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Hairdressers. Tips rely on yeah. hairdressers. Yeah. Like, so how you meant since this is all you last. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right? Um, okay. So you hired another salesperson. You mm-hmm. got a little more time. What was the next hire? We – I, I want to preface, we didn't get more time. <laughs> we sold more houses. Yes. I knew, I knew. Yes. That's why I said, I go, tell yes. me you didn't hire a salesperson. Yeah. No, um, we, yeah, Jamie, it, it didn't work the way we had it on paper yeah. where it was going to relieve. Yeah. It was like, oh, we have her doing this mm-hmm. and Jamie's still going full throttle on her right. 100 plus deals right. a year. And um, so we brought on another one. Yep. Another salesperson. Mm-hmm. Another sales agent. Mm-hmm. To handle guys, the extra leads. Do you guys leads. wear leather at night? Yeah. Like, enjoy good <laughs> yeah. meetings? Like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. When, okay, when did you finally say, 
wait a minute. Because now you're selling, what, 140 homes, yeah, 150 take, homes? Yeah. yeah. With, with no. Right now you're using the company transaction yeah. solution. Okay, so so you have a TC. Well, we, not- Who's doing your listing launches? We, we all are. We all are. I was doing them all. Nate was helping me do them all. So we didn't have a transaction coordinator who, or anybody. Who, who we, we did the, it backwards. Who, who puts the lockbox on? Nate did. Yeah, I was- Who puts the sign up? Nate. I was the field guy. Okay. Who puts the the extra flyers in the box? Me, Nate. I did that everything. Was really <laughs> expensive, Nate. Oh I yeah, know. I was. I, yeah. So you you were Boy Friday. Oh, absolutely. With and not on the payroll. And not on the payroll. And not yeah. on the payroll. Damn girl. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So you, context, right? Yeah. So you had help. You mm-hmm. were leveraging your extraordinary husband. Yes. What was that like for you? Like you're coming from the mortgage business, laying all these deals, and now you're like doing everything right jack of all yeah no it it was great like it really was um it's very uh corny mm-hmm. I, it was awesome to see her succeed yeah and it, at the time i was going to take a sabbatical right and figure Got out it. what i wanted to do context so yeah. i jumped into i'm going to do your listings for you yeah. and I'm, I'm a pretty wordy guy yeah and so i nailed a couple of uh, captions yeah. and and all that and then it was we're not going to pay a sign company. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'll go do it. Yeah. And so I did like all of that. I wasn't, I wasn't the TC. I didn't deal with clients. I did a couple of like final walkthroughs. Mm-hmm. Um, Jamie really was like hands on with all her clients. And it, I did all that, that field work, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And so it was easy to do though. Like I, I saw the success and I saw where we were going. And then when we started adding the agents, it was awesome. And it was the the second agent, I think, where we were like, okay, we need some more back end. Yeah. Yeah. And so what did you do early on the back end side? What, what, who did you hire first? What was that first role? Uh, it was Jen, basically. So Jen was our, mm-hmm. she was a teacher, yeah. past client. Yeah. And we were sitting at the closing table and um, I said, hey, Jen, I really need somebody to help me with yeah. doing the paperwork. Yeah. She's, you know- a, she's a two-time client. Let's, oh, let's yeah, get she's that my on second. there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So she, I said, if you know anybody, let me know. Yeah. And sure enough, I got a call maybe a week later and she said, I want to do it. So mm-hmm. she came on part-time during mm-hmm. the summer. Mm-hmm. School was out. And then she's been with us ever since. And she's had lots of different roles. So I know. it's been fun. I know. Yeah. yeah. So what happened when you brought Jen in? What happened to the business? Give it like give us context. This, like, is this 15, six, is this two years after your son was born? Three years after he was born? Um, four it, years after? It was probably two and a half, three years after he was born. Okay. Um, it just it was kind 15, of, uh, yeah, it just kind of gave us a lot of clarity that we did need help yes. on the paperwork. And it was it, funny enough, it allowed me to do more deals. <laughs> because she was doing the paperwork now. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Which had I known that a couple of years ago, I would have made that, you know, pulled that trigger a long time ago. But whenever you start in that position and you think, okay, now I've got to pay a salary. I yeah. think that first salary is very scary for people. Yeah. Um, Why? To make that jump. It's, it's. Why were you afraid of it? You had to have been making, we were making hundreds great, of thousands yeah, of dollars a year in money. commissions. I think it's it became that I was responsible for her. Oh. That's exactly it. Yeah. And I care about my people a whole lot. Yeah. And I wake up thinking about them all the time. Mm-hmm. And so now I had somebody I had to not, not worry about. Yes. But worry about. Well, you take a salary and you, you only think of the annual salary. Yes. How am I going to pay that? No, I just got to pay the next two weeks. The next two weeks. That's right. And yeah. then the next two weeks. Yeah. And then the next two weeks. Yep. So, so someone is listening right now who is so relating to the two of you and he or she is struggling because they're, they're real estate's like grapes, right? Nothing, 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 a bunch, yep. right? Nothing, 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 a bunch. Yep. And whether they're in a bunch or nothing, they know that it's not sustainable, right? As you experience, it's not sustainable. How, what would you say to that person right now to get them over the fence to hire a part-time virtual assistant, to call their neighbor who needs a part-time job and say, come help me with my paperwork or my transactions or help me with my marketing or whatever it may be, that that next layer of help. What do you say to that person? I would say, pick up the phone and do it or swipe the card, pull the mm-hmm. trigger, yeah. because what that does is it creates consistency mm-hmm. and it gets you off their real estate roller coaster yeah. because you're able to focus on what you do best yeah. and you've got somebody to do all the other stuff that kind of takes you away from the phone calls and the prospecting and marketing and all of that fun the money stuff. making stuff yeah. yeah but jamie i'm afraid because you know you know didn't you see that we're only forecasting 4.7 million sales and interest rates are going to be at nine 
and I'm afraid and the world's going to fall apart and we're all going to die and you want me to hire someone? Yes. Like that's yeah. the stuff that goes through people. Yes, you know, they, don't, they don't always say I want to die, but we know we're six moves from death and dying in every decision, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, hire an assistant. Oh my God, die. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say to that person? I, I really say How to- do you help them get over the fear? I say to, to, to treat this like a business, right? Mm -hmm. If you're really- passionate about real estate and wanting to succeed, mm -hmm. then you need to use your highest and best use of time. And that's probably building the relationship, talking to the client. Mm -hmm. So do yourself a favor and swipe the card and hire that person yeah. because that will keep your focus on prospecting and moving forward mm -hmm. than sitting back and worrying about paperwork because right. you're paying somebody to do that. It's part time. Right. You right. Know? When Jen first started, she was literally Jamie's assistant. Yeah. You know, and what was like really eye opening was how much she relieved, and she was only part time. Mm -hmm. You know, summertime she was uh, she had you know kids, and and she was a teacher, so she was just dabbling. Like, yeah. let's see if yeah. this works. Let's see if it's right. And even in that context, she she relieved so much of Jamie's workload, and and did all the stuff that needed to be done well. Jamie didn't need to do it though. Yeah. And and so it relieved her Jamie's mind of that and that's really when Jamie's mind started going. Yeah, I think it's it's the small brain versus the big brain thinking. Mhm. Mm like choose the big brain thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like it's like the reptilian brain, which is, <laughs> oh my god, we're going to die. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. if I walk outside a saber tooth tiger is going to eat me yeah. versus yeah. What's yeah. possible? Yeah, have a little yeah. faith in yourself right. and a little yeah. confidence right. and pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. We it's, were so nervous. I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, no, go. No, we were so nervous ab about taking, like, Jen had, she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. She, you know, had a 401k. Yeah. You know, we weren't right. offering any of that. Right. And and so it, it was the most nerve-wracking thing from the business point of view to say, um, Okay, we're gonna do this. Yes. Like I, we were, mm -hmm. we stayed up, like thinking about it. Like we had Jen in her, in, in our hands, right? We were responsible for it, and and that was the small brain thinking. It's like go big, like yeah. pull the trigger. Like we yeah. should have pulled the trigger yeah. two years ago. Like yeah. I, I shouldn't have come on. We should have pulled the trigger for some s somebody like that. Yeah. Earlier, I was listening to something uh, this morning about. Um, like if you like growing, I forget what the vegetable was. It was like maybe a pumpkin. And like this example was like, if you put a pumpkin inside, it'll only grow to the size of the jar, mm -hmm. right? Michael in fourth grade, when there was a snake in his class, he came home and he said, dad, we should get a snake. And I was like, why? And he goes, well, I want to test. Like if we, if we let it loose in the house, <laughs> they say that the snake only grows the size of the cage. And I was like, Oh no. What if it eats your brother? He's yeah. like, awesome. <laughs> right? like, but, but, he, but like I knew what he, he was like, I want to test to see how big I can get. That's like exposure, right? It's all, it's pushing the boundaries it's, as you're yeah. saying, like this sort of limitless thinking. Yeah. How does somebody go from constrained thinking, you know, low arc of perspective thinking to thinking this way? I think educating yourself, I think, and, and I think a big part of it is your mindset and what you do every morning to start your day. I really feel like if you start on a, a schedule, a routine, whatever it is that you need to do to make, to just believe in yourself, I think mm -hmm. that's a big step for people. And I think that's sometimes hard to do, especially when you listen to all the negative stuff that's going on in the world and yeah. everything about the market. It's like, you know... Tone all that out, mm -hmm. believe in yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and do what you need to do to grow on a daily basis and push yourself. But I think for me that we, we talk about it at our house, that's a big <laughs> brain thought. Like right. we are talking constantly about what's your big brain thought today, you know, but just not having any limits. Yeah. There shouldn't be any limits, right? right? Why are there limits? Right. 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 Yeah. Not letting the obstacles and the mm -hmm. challenges that are part of the the process stop you or like paralyze you, mm -hmm. right? And that's, again, that's a, a Jamie strength. It's like, okay, how do we get around this? How do we fix this? I need to be there now. Right, yeah, and, right. And, and, but that that thinking comes from somewhere, right? Like that's not a college course, right? That's no. not a high school course. That's a got your ass kicked a couple of that's times. That's a survival mm -hmm. course. And didn't, yeah. Right, that's yeah. a survival. Like that's, yeah. you know, yeah. coming from the streets, coming from a hardship, yeah. right? That you're like, well, if I want to eat, yeah. like I'm telling everybody today, like it, this is a predator market, mm -hmm. right? Like this is the lioness market, right. right? Wake up in the morning, take care of your family, kill something, bring it back to your kids. Yep. You didn't kill anything. No one cares. Go back out, kill again. 
Yeah. Right. Which people are like, well, that's yeah, a little yeah, aggressive. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, uh, you know, it's aggressive not having money. Yeah. That's, that's right. exactly right. That's, that's right. really aggressive. Like, let's see yeah. how long I can go without money. Yeah. Like that's aggressive in real estate. Yeah. To me, aggressive is not making phone calls. Okay. Let's transition. So here we are today. I don't know what day today is, whatever. It's sometime in November when we're recording It's his birthday this. today. No yeah. way. It is. Jesus. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it on the podcast. Just Thank for you. The Tom. Listeners, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday, yeah. Nate. Yeah. So today- you have how many people in the business? 36 total. 36 total. Mm -hmm. Over 500 transactions. We were talking uh, earlier. I got a text from DC that showed me your three primary goals for 2023. Walk us through. We should put this up on the screen, by the way. Walk us through <laughs> why three goals, why those three goals and let's talk about what we feel we have to do to make those goals a reality. Because there's some there's some big ass goals in there. Yeah, huge. So so why why only three goals? Um, well, um, the big reason is so that I don't drive everybody crazy. That's number one because I'm notorious for walking into a room after I've talked to you or David Caldwell and yeah. said I've got seven great new ideas. Yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. But, okay, but hold on. Yeah. Why is that a problem as a leader? Why is that a problem in general? Well, I didn't think it was a problem, but now I know it's a problem. <laughs> okay, but now you know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for the people that are looking at what, who is he looking at off camera, it's the people that say, this is a problem. This is a problem. <laughs> because why? Because they haven't finished the Ex stuff you talked about last week exactly. or the week before. Yes. Exactly. And we only have so much time and capacity. Yeah. And I have, um, I have some, like my whole leadership team are unicorns, right? Yes. Yeah, and so absolutely. the minute I give them a project, they're on it. Yeah. And they may say that's not a good one or whatever. Yes. And we talk about it and either scratch it or do it, but they do it. So they don't say no either. Right. So that's a problem because we never really got anything fully done. That's the key. So for the person listening, do you hear that? If you have too many goals, if you have too many things you're trying to accomplish in your business, I look, oh, there's the 10 things I want to do in my business. I'm like, it's one, two, three, too many. Yep. You get beyond three, it's too many. Whether you read four disciplines of execution, you read measure what matters, you read traction, you read managing by Harold Janine, everyone says the same thing. One, two, or three goals max. Right. So, so how do you think this is going to play out in 2023 with your team? It's going to be what, awesome. Do they have permission to tell you to shut up and no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. Okay. This is being recorded. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> right, they do. They, yeah. they, they have zero problem with yes. that. And so the rule this coming up here mm -hmm. is if it doesn't affect the three goals, it Bingo. gets put on another board for the next year. Right. Um, so good idea. Yeah. Not this year. That's right. And so it's been very clear to marketing, to finance, to mm -hmm. sales, mm -hmm. to ops, everybody, mm -hmm. that if it doesn't affect what we're trying to do for this 2023 mm -hmm then we're not doing it. Okay. So tell us what the three goals are for this year. Increase, uh, or we're supposed to hire 48 <laughs> agents. Okay. That's so number hire, one. So so how many net effective agents will you have at the end of the year? If you have how many today now? We have 26 today. Okay. So 26, hiring 48. How many will be net effective by the end of the year? Because we, for the person listening, I keep saying net effective. Like how many are actually going to sell houses? Right. How many will actually be with us? Right, because you'll hire some people that didn't work out that, mm -hmm. that told you they wanted to make phone calls and do open houses and take leads and go sell houses. Yeah, until they didn't. Until they yep. didn't. Yeah. So our our goal is fifty to fifty five net effective agents. Okay, so fifty to fifty five net effective agents, and you own the brokerage, right? Mm -hmm. no. no, no, no. We're no. with Compass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, I just want to clarify. Yeah. 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 Like, like fifty five agents. <laughs> yeah. On a team. <laughs> on a yeah. team. Where do they all sit? Well, um, they don't. <laughs> Yeah, they stand. They stand. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's, it's all just, fun. It's the end of commercial real estate. Yeah. As we know yeah. It. Like yeah. Some commercial broker right now, like, no, <laughs> yeah. please lease yeah. more spaces. Okay. So one is hire 48, get to 50 to 55 net effective. Mm -hmm. What's number? What's the number two goal? Um, list 500 homes this year. Okay. That's a big number. It is that's a big a number. How many number. listings did we have sell this year? 170 ish. Okay. So 170 ish. So for the listener, should we unpack how we're going to make that happen? I think we should. <laughs> What's number three? Is to increase profit up to 35%. Okay. So increase owner discretionary income, AKA profit to 35%. Okay. Pre tax, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Yes. yes. So yes. Then, then you pay your taxes. Right. Okay, yes. good. So let's let's unpack first how to go from 170 listings to 500. And it's just great that my next coaching session is with Lisa Chinati. Oh, fun. <laughs> and we're having okay. the same conversation. Fun. So I'll okay. take some notes and we'll we'll maybe we'll do that call together. Yes. Okay. 
Why don't we even say call? We live on Zoom. All right. So how are you going to go? Give us some examples. And if you two want to jump in and, and add and flower to this, how are we going to go from having 170 listings sold to 500? Well, we've got a couple. Let me pull up my board. Yep. Oh, we've got a couple of different avenues that we're going to look at this year. I know. I'm putting you on the spot. You're yeah. Like, no, it's can okay. I, can I please look at the board? Yeah. No, it's good. Uh, the first one is, is Director of Sales, Jen. Uh, mm -hmm. We are diving into our database. Okay. So one is, how big is the database? Uh, 18,000. So we're going to focus on the 18,000 people in our database and cultivate a higher percentage of listing referrals and referrals and referrals Absolutely. and referrals. Correct. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Um, with that, she's going to, you know, we're, we're talking about role playing, having more conversations, having more meaningful conversations mm -hmm. with people and just getting our agents aware that they're going to have to switch that mindset that they were in six months ago, yeah. which I think we're doing a pretty good job at right now. Absolutely. Um, number two is marketing. Uh, part of our uh, listing plan is to make sure that for every listing that we do get, we get two deals from that. So that's one of them that's also. That's a big one. Yep. And then we're going to- Big shout out to Eileen Rivera, the queen of mm -hmm. take one listing, get, get two, two more, more deals yep. every time. So the one for two plan. Yep. And Good. then we have a different campaigns that we're going to be running. So mm -hmm. one of the campaigns that we're looking at is the over 65. Um, so yes. trying to target- Sellers that are over 65 that need a downsize. So I know why you're doing that. Why are you doing that? I'm doing it because in our area, there's a really great uh, opportunity, I believe, for people that are over 65 that mm -hmm. need to move down. Yes. There's so many grandparents like, like and- A smaller house? Like oh, move, yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Property? yeah. Get absolutely. out of the two-story, get into a ranch. Yeah. Right. They've We'd, got so much equity in their property. And, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to remind the listeners. So if you if you look at the US, so wherever you are in the world, look at your own demographic of, of ages. We just talked about this on a live show. Um, the single biggest demographic today is obviously the millennials, 21 to or 22 to 42. Mm -hmm. They're now selling their first house, right? Which is, you know, they've had that second kid or that third kid, or they're having their first. And they're like, okay, we need more space. But the biggest demographic to pay attention to is the baby boomers from like, what is it? 65 to, I'm going to screw this up to 80 or whatever yeah. the number is, but they have more real estate and they have more equity than anybody else, any other demographic. So that is a huge opportunity. So you're going to do a demographic farm of 65 year olds with two story houses with two story or houses. just 65 year olds? I, I think so, we'll, we'll focus on two story, but I think we'll probably broaden it over to yeah. just, yeah. Wait, yeah, this I, is good because we're like having a coaching session right yeah, now in exactly. the middle of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the two you you had said somewhere in in about the two story like you know sixty five yes. and yeah. at the time like we literally just moved my mom from mm -hmm. a two story house yeah. Yeah. that she like the carpet upstairs is brand new yeah, she, she lived in that thing there. for no. fifteen yeah. years yeah. Yeah. Exactly. and and we put her in a ranch. Yeah. You know, and and so in that, knowing that and just gone through that personally, it was like, aha. Uh -huh. And so targeting those people that and they they have more equity. How many how many um, did you use like Remind, your MLS or just, you know, shout out to Remind or whatever yeah. data mining solution you have yeah. associated with your MLS to pull up the stats? Do a yeah. search query on 65 or 75 year olds with no equity in two story houses. Yeah. Remind. How, how yeah. many did you get? Um, gosh, we got about 22, I want to say 22,000 in the whole Ooh. Houston area, not just Katie, though. We okay. went broad. So, yeah. so yeah. if you narrowed the focus, mm -hmm. assuming you're going to narrow the focus, right? right. Test, right? Test on a Testing, smaller yep. focus, yeah. produce results, and then go broader. Um, so 22,000, that's big. That's quite a bit. And was yeah. that with no, um, with no mortgage? That was with no mortgage. Wow. Yeah. That's a huge. That was a huge area in Houston. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's a, and then do you know all of the uh, 65 and older communities that they might move to? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've are got you, them all flagged. All right, okay, good. And you're mm -hmm. making inroads there, yep. relationships there. Mm -hmm. We've okay. got a brand new one actually opening up in our area that we've become, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, just some of our old relationships have gone over there. Right. And yeah. so right. we've got a great connection there too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's like my clients in the Northeast. I just say to them, like, if you're doing the demographic farm, just like six postcards a year of like, a picture of a beach in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. You just start in November yeah. and finish around March. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Know, this could be you, right? Yes. Just some toes in the sand. Yeah. Right? Big like, sun. Over and yes. over again. Okay. So campaigns like demographic farming. What else? Yeah. Um, I think the other one that we're tackling that we're looking into with our lender is people that are in forbearance. Yes. So for us, yes. um, 
we're kind of in the test small, stages. Small, it's going to be a small list if you're talking about like, you know, from the pandemic, right? I mean, yes. but still, it's yeah. going to be a list nonetheless. It, absolutely. And I right? think it's somewhere we could also help where they yes. they take the equity that's out of their property. They don't lose Bingo. it. They Bingo. don't tear up their credit. Right. It, for us, I think that's a, a really positive way for us to give back and help. I love it. Yeah. It's like a, it's like the opposite of a short sale. Yeah. Yeah. So much equity inside yeah, exactly. the property. Yeah, so, exactly. So that's a great one. So, kind of market it on that avenue. Okay, so forbearance. Right. What else? What else are you thinking about? Um, our other kind of program that we're looking mm -hmm. at is our legacy program, yep. which we've talked to you guys yep. about, but yep. just helping the community that's retiring or leaving yes. the real estate industry. I really feel a need to give back to those agents that have given so much to our community. Yep. We've created a program to where they come to us, we co-market with them, but as we co-market with them, that we also, you know, work their database. Right. Yeah. Which they're not working really exactly. anymore. Yeah. Such but, a smart idea. But they do get re residual income from yep. it and it's our way of giving back. So I'm looking at this board and you have all these initiatives. And I think what's important for the listener right now to think about is we're talking to a, a husband and wife team that started in 06, did open houses, did open houses in Relo, mm -hmm. made a lot of phone calls, doubled their business again, but then an epiphany, like ha I'm having a baby. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Brought another salesperson, which I still think is insane, but mm -hmm. I knew that's probably what happened. Mm -hmm. Then you finally get Jen. It starts to change. And now we're talking about going from 500 transactions to listing 500 homes in a year. What what is she going to do when you only list 393? Yeah, like my favorite saying. She just went like this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to calm her down. Yeah. And and but it sucks making money, right? Like it we've gotten it, we've still increased and yep. we got very close to our goal. Yeah. Jamie's going to know exactly why we didn't hit the goal. Yeah. In 2024 is going to be a lot brighter because of it. Yeah. Because it, it is a math equation, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It is how much direct mail, how much phone calls, how many open houses, how much of X to Y, right? Like Lisa and I are already talking about some some Google tests that I'll tell you about, you know, off camera. Sorry, it's early. <laughs> You'll hear about it later. Um, but we're getting a 1% conversion on sellers, yeah. right? With a wow. specific type of ad. And if you're getting 1% conversion and you're 11 weeks into the campaign, you're already That's getting 1% conversion That's and your CAC is like, 1250 bucks. I'm like, wow, $100,000 a month. Yeah. Start immediately. Yes. Right? Like just yes. attack. But so how much of this is testing and how do you, how do you do the test? How much time do you take with the test before you go good hypothesis, bad execution or good hypothesis, good execution, but it just didn't work. You know, not every infomercial television deal works. Yeah. Not every show works. Not every marketing campaign works. Yeah. How do you guys run it? I, it, I think our fo one of our marketing focuses is making sure that stuff is trackable mm -hmm. and and being able to track it and make the tweaks, the small tweaks that will change it. We had a, a billboard. Um, I, I don't know if this is off topic or not. We had a billboard that we just had words on, like mm -hmm. we're awesome, right? Yeah. Something like that. And we changed it, took all these words off and just said real estate redefined, put Jamie's incredibly beautiful picture up there yes. <laughs> and um, black and white slick. And all of a sudden people were like, Hey, you just got a new billboard. We had a freaking billboard for, you know, so it, it's the, yes. we learned from that in like, you got to tweak quick. Yes. I think it's also too in real estate. And I'm, I was guilty of it. Um, is you do spend money, you do run different campaigns, mm -hmm. but if you don't measure them right. and tra track them, then what's the point of doing it? Bingo. Right? And so, but but as a new agent or as a new team leader even, I did things like that where I'm like, why, why am I doing this? Like, what's the point of this? Why am I spending money on this if right. I can't even track it to right. see what's happening with it? You don't know if it works. So I think before you spend money or do anything like that, have your system in place and figure out how you're going to track it to see yeah. if it works. I was looking at the legacy text conversation, which is like QR codes on everything. Yeah. QR codes on everything. <laughs> yes. QR yes. codes yes. on everything. And yeah. for the person listening, it's, the, it's how do you track a measure? Yeah. Right. Like I just did a webinar and I'm like, and if you want more information, you want to download these goodies, here's the QR code. And I talk about it and I give them this. And, and I know they're just going click, 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 but just like consumers are doing it. Right. Don't put it on a billboard. You don't want people driving going, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right. That could be bad. <laughs> so, so you're testing, you're tracking and measuring and then making good decisions from there. That's kind That's of what right. I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's unpack. First of all, thank you. And you know, we can go deeper and deeper, but I think, I think for you listening right now, you get, they've got a plan, they've got a team. They're working on it. It's up in visual. We're going to track and measure everything. How in the world are the two of you going to hire 40? And I know it's not the two of you, but it's the team. How are you going to hire 48 people in one year? How does that, how does that work? 
<laughs> I know real estate brokerages that can't hire yes. 48 people in a year. There's a manager listening right now like, you have my attention. A team is going to hire 48 people yes. on lesser splits than a traditional real estate company? Mm -hmm. That's right. Tell me more about that. Well, um, personally, I believe mm -hmm. that we have to give value to the person that we're interviewing, right? Mm -hmm. And I really feel when I when I got out of production this past year, my whole focus became the agents yes. and running the business. So for me, um, everything that I do and say and the decisions I make are based on on the agents. Mm -hmm. um, so for us with recruiting, we do not recruit people or hire people that aren't serious about doing real estate. We want people to have a passion. We want people to have um, that grit. We turn a lot of people away, actually. And mm -hmm. instead of turning them away, we say, go get some experience and then come back and see us, right? Yeah. Um, so, so for us, it's just really important to make sure we have that right hire and to stay on track with the KPIs, making the phone calls, mm -hmm. but also showing the person in front of us the value that our team gives them. Yes. And I do believe one of our biggest strengths is that we care about the whole person, not just about your goal for the, mm -hmm. the month. So yes. we give people, we have financial advisors come in. We have mm -hmm. holistic doctors come in. Mm -hmm. We want the person, the whole person to succeed. Yeah. So I, I think that's part of our value proposition, but I'm very strong. I feel very strong about our value proposition too. I get that. Yeah. So then what about the tactical side? Because if you're turning people away, mm -hmm. one would argue you need to probably 4X that number in terms of interviews. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, just knowing recruiting in real estate for 30 years, it could be even 5X the 48. I already know it's going to be like 250, right? 250 people you need to talk to. That will mean to. Yeah. say yes, which means how many actual touch points do right. you need to have 250 people raise their hands? Are these all unlicensed getting licensed? Are these people in licensing school and you're marketing to them? Are they just got their license and you're now, you know, targeting them? I mean, where are they coming from? Well, what are your sources? Yeah, we're crystal clear on our avatar, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have an avatar. Our recruiting director knows what we want um, and she's very passionate. Why do you have an avatar? Because I want her to make sure that when she's interviewing somebody that they fit into our culture, mm -hmm. but also the agent that does very well in our team. Yes. And typically the agents that do very well in our team are agents that have been in the business a year to year and a half that mm -hmm. have done like six to 12 deals, but mm -hmm. can't quite figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, when they come into our system and plug and play there, they tend to do really, really well. Yes. yes. And so, and I think for a new, brand new agent, we may run a little too quick for a brand new agents. So that's why we say go get some yeah. experience and then come back. But yeah. anyways, um, we, I, we treat recruiting just like we would treat a buyer or seller lead. We've got different mm -hmm. pillars, right? Yeah. And so we've it's, got- It's marketing, right? Exactly, it's yeah. And so when you kind of put it that way, it mm -hmm. makes sense. We we talk to our vendors. Our vendors always know we're looking yeah. for great people. Yeah. Agent referrals, we ask yeah. agents. We do surveys every transaction. We do, of course, social media marketing. Yeah. Um, you guys tag me in everything. Everything. Yes, yeah, yes. Everything. Yes. Um, so I think if you treat recruiting. And we've gotten a couple of agents from that. Yeah. That's good. Yes. That's good. <laughs> good. Please don't tag me in every <laughs> But I think if you, if you treat recruiting like you would treat your buyer and seller leads and you treat that part of a very systematic pillar system with campaigns and yes. it works well. Now, the key to it all, though, is also having a really great reputation and yes. treating your people nice yes. and doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. So- Who's the single throat to choke on recruiting? Who's ultimately accountable for it? Um, director of sales. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually terrible at recruiting. They took me off of it <laughs> because- You would just talk people into joining? No. I would. If you told me a story, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I can help you. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's, yes. that's me. It. So yeah. they were like, I no, can help. I can yeah, help. I can, I can, I can help, help that. Yeah. Don't worry. You have yeah. no money. You're about yeah. to die. Yeah. I can help you. Yes. Let's go. That's right. Yes. yes. That was me. Okay. All right. So we unpacked a lot on this show. I'm, I'm really curious. First of all, for the person listening right now, if they wanted to reach out to you guys and ask you a question, can they? Oh, absolutely. 100%, yeah. How do they reach out to you? Jamie, Jamie at the Jamie McMartin group .com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Say it again. Jamie at the Jamie McMartin group .com. Okay, cool. What about on Instagram? Do you answer oh, Instagram, that? Instagram, okay. Facebook, yeah. YouTube, DMs. all that good stuff. Yeah. I had uh, I had my buddy Jim on here. I was talking about you. He did like a billion two in sales last year. He's mm. run a team forever. <laughs> And he's like, sure, yeah, like, you know, yeah, you could DM me on this. Or phone. He had like 500 phone calls. Oh, fun. He was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great because now <laughs> no. he's like literally like, because he talks about, I think you met him. He does. He goes out and says, let's go find every lot that isn't maximized at yield. So it's a, it's a, you know, yes, R, R7 with a single family residence on it. He's like, let's go buy that. And then we'll 
built seven houses. Now we got seven listings. We don't have an inventory problem anymore. Yeah. And people are like, how do you do that? <laughs> yes. How do you do that? Yes. So get ready. Yes. Because yeah. they're, they're hearing the story of brand new agent straight into the worst economy real estate's probably ever seen, mm -hmm. right? Into, you know, getting where you're at today, which is absolutely bananas and where you're going. So the three big goals again are um, 48 agents hired, list 500 houses, and then 35% profit. So what are you going to do differently to optimize profitability? Well, the first thing that we did um, was kind of look at all of our platforms, mm -hmm. um, little things like that. Just looking at our platforms yeah. to see all if we the actually, reoccurring expenses. Yeah, like, does anybody use this? Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do we Started need this? What is questions. this for? Can we yeah. do something else differently? Does right. it work for yeah. us? Still? And why, we have three platforms. They all do the same thing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Which one does everybody use? And that's what it's hard. Where they're like, well, we like this one. Yeah. You like this one. We like that one. Well, we're going to get rid of two of them. Yeah. Yep. We just yeah. did the same thing in my companies. Makes yep. sense. So, so finding the waste. What else? Well, I, I'm going to argue that the first thing you did is you declared a goal. We did, yeah. And the moment you declare a goal, people like you achieve it. Mm -hmm. For the person listening, it's. I remember Earl Nightingale saying, you know, it's not it's not achieving the goal; it's setting the goal. The moment you set the goal, things start things to start you know, to providence happen. starts to move, right? Mm -hmm. Everything starts to happen. So set the goal, reduce the waste. What else? How often are you tracking and measuring profitability? Well, that's something that we we haven't always been great at, to yes. be honest, because everything just came in, right? Money came in. And so yeah. the last two years, we've really been uh, hyper-focused on making mm -hmm. sure that we look at numbers every day. Smart. Nate's in charge of all the finance. So he's always telling us, yes, we call him the no guy. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Say no more often. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. So it's- Not K-N-O-W. Well, it depends <laughs> no. who's asking yes. me. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. Exactly. Yes. But yeah. just, just being hyper-aware of what money's coming in yes. and then also what's going out. Right, Yeah. right. I think it's being mindful of too. You got to look at you've got fixed expenses and variable expenses, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And and you know, can I can I can I find the waste in the fix? Like I'm going through the same thing with my company. I'm like, look, even though we're growing and we're profitable, like there's no doubt that we're going into a different market. There's no doubt we're going into a different economy. And even though we're going to hire way more people, we're going to technically increase a lot of our expenses. I'm like, let's cut seven percent of our fixed cost. Right. How can we do it? You know, we got all that extra space. Can we sublease the space, right? Like, like I'm looking at every possible scenario. And when you when you empower people to look at that stuff, they find the waste. They find the waste. They and that's Absolutely. The then mm -hmm. you got to look at your variable stuff. And it's like, this is why marketing to me is our largest variable cost. So it's, okay, how am I going to track and measure? How am I going to really optimize right. all this stuff? I'm, nothing goes out without a CTA or a way to track a measure. If right. we're just going to send it out, just light the money on fire and exactly. send it out. Yeah. It's, exactly. it's getting rigorous around that. Yep. And that's when you start going, okay, wait, but having a monthly accountability around where are we at profit to plan. And and everyone listening knows you're not going to get to 35% like the first month. It could be like 18% right. the first month. Exactly. And then the next month you have more closings. Right. So, you know, in real estate is like grapes, right? Even yeah. at your level doing a gazillion deals, it's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Shorter maybe in the first quarter, a lot in the second quarter, maybe less in the third and a ton in the fourth. You know the seasonality of your business. Um, but where is the accountability on money? The accountability is 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 tracking, you know, and knowing mm -hmm. what our goal is. Mm -hmm. Are we on track for the goal? And how does that affect the the budget yep. compared to the actual spend? Right. And and all four of those go together. Yep. Oh. And squeezing every yes. result, every lead we don't follow up on, yeah. every phone call we don't answer negatively impacts our revenue, Absolutely. negatively impacts our profit. All the all the money's in follow up. Right. Right. We say these things, but like it really becomes real when you're like, wow, we just closed seven transactions that we generated last year from realtor.com or home light or whoever mm -hmm. it may be. And now we're getting paid on that. There was no more cost associated to it. That's a profitable, you know what I mean? Like exactly. just looking yeah. at it that way. So I hope the person listening really gets that. But I wanted to add, mm -hmm. like um, I, when you were talking, it made me think of right before COVID mm -hmm. uh, or right when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And we just started with Doug actually at yeah. that time. And one of the things that Doug told me is you do want to watch your spending, but you don't want to cut the things that are making you money. Bingo. And so for us, um, we are constantly being reminded or reminding each other, mm -hmm. okay, is that a money-making right. avenue for Cost us? Cost center versus profit center. Right. Don't, don't cut the profit don't center. Be right. rigorous. Yeah, but, but most people will, yes. right? Oh, yeah. It's easy to yeah. go to the 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 most you know, the, the largest cost of, yep. of your budget yep. Yep. and say, we got to get rid of this, yep. you know, $33,000 lead source. Right, right. 
Yeah. But lead source is bringing you in $120,000 a yeah. month. Yeah. You know, why are you cutting it? If you spend a dollar and you make yeah. three or four, I mean, yeah. in the infomercial business, my buddy Ken, like, he's like, if you spend a dollar and you make a buck 50, you should be spending $50 million a month. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That, yeah. That buck 50, that That's 50 true. cents yeah. adds up really That's big, right. Yeah. right? Selling anything. But yeah. In, in real estate, it could really be spend a dollar, make seven, spend a dollar, yeah. make five, spend a dollar, make eight. Email is like spend a dollar, make 44. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but it's understanding the numbers, tracking, measuring the numbers. Um, what, what's, do you guys use CSU, CTE, Excel spreadsheet, Abacus? We use CSU. How do you guys track? Yeah, we okay. use CSU, yeah. Abacus. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> Abacus. Click, 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 click. <laughs> okay. All right. So I feel like I've asked you guys a ton of questions. It's mm -hmm. been super valuable. Um, Jamie at McMartingroup.com. The, nope. the. Jamie at the Jamie the, McMartin Group dot com. I knew yes. I was doing that wrong. It's so okay. thank you for correcting me. Yes. So we got it out there again. Yes. All right. So as we wrap, any closing thoughts, any, any predictions for 2023? Anything you want to just share with the person listening right now? Go ahead. <laughs> Does she do that all the time? Yes. Yeah, you go ahead. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I'll piggyback off of you. Yeah. Uh, 2023 is like it's going to be incredible, right? Yeah. Like the the market slowed down and we collectively were, were excited. Yeah. Like it was, it's a nervous, right? It's not a fear. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, <laughs> yes. And it's, it's like this, we are about to get better. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, we, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, it, it, we're about to get better. Like we can, we're, we're going, we're going to dig into who we are. We're going yes. to dig into growth and instead of slowing down, it's, it's all gas, no brakes. I love it. I love it. That's a UT reference, by yeah, the way. That's like right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's go. That's right. Closing yeah. thoughts, Jamie? No, I think um, for the people out there right now that are nervous, I I say dig in to yourself, mm -hmm. get some confidence, call me. I'm happy to talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, but surround yourself with positive people that can impact your life in a positive way and and don't have a ceiling. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to all the hype and right. um, and keep that just keep that open mindset. I think, I think it's going to take a lot of hard work though. So it's, yes. there's no doubt about it. It's going to take, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but treat it like a business. Mm -hmm. This is a business. It's yeah. a great business, right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Millions and millions and millions of dollars in commissions. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. This has been super great. Um, I hope you listen to this three or four times and I would certainly encourage you if you, if you know someone who's feeling kind of, Oh, this market, I would send them this. Right. Super inspiring, but very tactical, very thoughtful about how they grew and what they did and what they added. And then going through that last part was bananas. Um, and then for you, just think about what are you taking away from this? What's the action you're going to take? And as always, if you're whatever platform you're on, hit the like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that stuff to make sure you always get this in your inbox. So thank you so much for being you. Keep kicking ass and we'll see you on the next podcast. Take care. Mm -hmm.